Gary in Fullerton, California. See more better with ChristianEyewear.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better, because I might be seeing Mo Better, looking Mo Better, and show everyone else how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses when I cut. Your Zeiss Light D digital freeform progressive lenses with the Photo Fusion Green and DuraVision Chrome Anti Glare for your Oakley. 8149 Pitchman R Carbon, size 50, color 03, polished clear. In fact, I wore this frame for a while myself. Let me take everything out of the original packaging as Oakley sends it. Your Oakley hard shell case, your Oakley cleaning cloth slash carrying bag, and inside of your carrying bag slash cleaning cloth is the star of the show, the main attraction. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. But again, this is the Pitchman R Carbon, also known as, if that can be seen, the Oakley 8149. This is color 03, the 50i size, and the polished clear. So I'm going to take out your, the classic crystal frame keyhole bridge. It's called that because you, you can put a skeleton key in there versus a saddle bridge that would go over a horse. You can see the difference. It looks like the old vintage doors where you could put a skeleton key in. This is known as the P3 shape. This is the classic, classic styling, but with new age carbon fiber temples. Very strong, but very lightweight. Another great thing about this frame, no screws to ever come loose. I had an orthopedic surgeon say that's the same type of joints they're installing for knee and hip replacements. So, you got that going for you. So I'm going to pop out the original de demo lenses, one of which says Oakley. And by the way, if you want one of these frames, I'm slowly getting Oakleys onto this website. Um, if you click the shop page on the left-hand side, there's a... There's a... I don't know what you call it. It, sa it says categories. And then you click on Oakley where it says categories until we get them more prominent on the front page. But I'm going to put my frame into the tracing element of the blocker. First, I've got to sign a barcode to this. You are Secret Agent 2962. And so that way I program the shape into the computer so that years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, I can send the lenses right to your home and you'll see how to pop them in. I'm going to hit the start button. The little stylus is going to pop up, go around, trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at ChristianEyewear.com where believing is seeing. Also, everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy any Oakley frame or any frame that I offer and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Now, you'll get your full reimbursement from the health savings account flex dollars. I am out of network as far as insurance goes. I do not accept any insurance plans. So if you submit the itemized receipt that I can provide upon request, you will get your out-of-network reimbursement. Excuse me, one second. <coughs> Excuse me. In the middle of this COVID thing, I apologize. I, but I talk so much, uh, my throat gets dry, and I do get a little sawdust here by the edger. So, that is the shape that we'll be cutting. I'm going to move on to the next screen to enter your pupillary distance, which is 63 divided by 2 is 31.5. So the computer starts at 32.5, so I need to tap the minus button twice. It goes down in half millimeter increments to 31.5. I want to raise the optical center height to 24. Change the layout screen from single vision to progressive, which is another name for the no line bifocal, trifocal, multifocal. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and inset inside those orange crosshairs. So I'm going to take your lenses out of the protective sleeves that they come in. This is marked the right lens. Take the right lens out, place it on the platform. This is a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I got them here. The black side is the sticky side. We're going to stick this one onto the first block. We're going to do the same thing now for the second one. 
pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. That silver button on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. And the dots that are on the lenses tells me how to orient the lens to be cut. We're going to get everything laid out as such. Okay, we are good to go. I'm going to hit that button. The arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same. Oh, but first, the nice thing about Zeiss that I love, they document everything. I was an Essilor man for years and years. But I switched over to Zeiss because they had the Generation 8 technology before Essilor. In fact, Zeiss invented the photochromic lens. They were the only ones producing it for seven years until their patent ran out. Then they sold the technology to other companies such as Essilor, which then branded that technology Transitions. Zeiss also invented anti-glare coating, which they were the only ones to produce until their patent ran out. They sold the technology to, again, Essilor, who they branded that as Crizol. So... But Essilor does not document everything, not even on their most expensive lenses. Zeiss does it for everything. So I'm going to highlight this. This is the right lens. It is the Zeiss Progressive Light D18, which is their longer corridor. The 1.59 is the refractive index, Photofusion Pioneer Green. And anti-glare coating below that is DuraVision Chrome. Your right eye reads minus 250, minus 150 at 173. Progressive power of 2. I'm going to put that on there. So you know you're getting all the manufacturer's original packaging. And of course, the sunglass level UV protection in a clear lens. Let's do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right, which I can identify with. Lay that out there. You have the same pupillary distance, same optical center height. So that doesn't need to be changed. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky on the block. Line up the magnet. Get that lined up. You know, it's funny. I have a tell. My tell is I get quiet. I have to concentrate when I'm doing this. So I don't talk. I get quiet. Okay. So now the block is on the left lens. We're going to highlight the powers. Exactly what you're getting there. DuraVision Chrome. Your prescription minus 250 minus one and a quarter at five. Your two add power, the progressive power. Now that's not enough. That's cute and what they do, but they go into more detail on an eight by eleven piece of paper that the next time you go to the doctor's office and they just casually ask, What are you wearing? Hand them this piece of paper. Pow! This has got everything. The Zeiss Progressive Light D, which is digital, freeform progressive lens. Same thing here that's on here. It says the Progressive Light D, the refractive index, which is 1.59, which is polycarbonate, photofusion, pioneer green. It's got the power of your right eye here, your add power, the power of your left eye here, the add power, your pupillary distance for the right and left eye, the fitting height where the Progressive is going to go, the base curve of the lens. Plus, since this is a digital freeform lens that has compensated powers for distance and reading for both eyes, that's there. The two dots that I have on the outside corners of this lens that helps me lay out on the screen. It has the engraving shapes and, and insignias for that, the layout chart. So, if you're at your doctor's office, they can lay out the lenses too and read all these powers that are on the lens. So, if someone even had an auto refractor, an auto lensometer. This is manual because I went to school. I know how to operate one of these. But sometimes places are too busy. And they just put the lens in, hit a button, it reads the power, and that's what it's going to read. So all that's provided there to document that everything was made according to the doctor's prescription. And if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> Remember, ChristianEyewear.com, home of the free bad jokes with every pair of glasses sold. So, this is the tracer, this is the blocker, this is the edger. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. But the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel that's going to grind away your lens material till it's the final size. This wheel in the center that has that channel, that little valley 
That's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel on the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I'm going to wake up the computer. Job ID number 2962. So the data that I entered here has been transferred over 2962 or as I like to say installment 2962 of my 330 million volume series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in America. So stay tuned for episode number 330 million. It's going to be wacky. So spoiler alert. The what am I doing? Oh, so. Oh, I just did that. 2962. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that material. But we're going to stick with polycarbonate. I'm going to not polish the edges because it's not going to be seen in this frame anyway. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens, but I am going to place one on the rear concave surface of the lens. And I'll show you why in just a little bit, but I'm going to press the sticker on there firmly. Now the magnet's going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Did I mention free bad jokes with the purchase of every pair of glasses made? Hit the green start button, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as just go around tracing the shape of the lens. And then the old Jewish carpenter saying, measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point. To know exactly where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness saying. Actually, I believe the old Jewish carpenter saying is, love thy neighbor. So the light you see flickering in the background is water to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto those lens materials for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now, water will spray onto your lenses, Gary, but only on the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris you may see beginning to form on the edge of your lenses. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact, ballistics-grade lens material, the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and from flying debris. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, or your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. In fact, Zeiss offers the most complete protection of any lab. They have partnered with the American Cancer Society because of that. The UV, the sunglass level protection in a clear lens. Their protection goes all the way to 400 nanometers, whereas all the other labs stop at 380. Now you have the photofusion green aspect of the lens, which I'll talk about later, but you also got the DuraVision Chrome anti-glare coating. Anti-glare is three features in one. The first feature is that it reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights and such, the second feature is it reduces reflection. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses, so it makes for a much better eye contact. Or if you take a selfie, you're less likely to see the lens, you know, the phone in the lens, or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you're less likely to see the flash in the lens. Now water has begun spraying, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. Now the third feature that I like, the anti-glare, out from the foreground will come a lever with a spinning disc on there to apply the safety bevel on the back surface of the lens. But the machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the expense, Zeiss puts the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. Now in just a moment, I will open this door with my mind. If you like that, I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can, I just have to stare at it for a couple hours, but then I can melt it. So I'm gonna get all the optical sawdust off the lens that the water did not get. 
that's how I wear a groove into my thumbnail and once it's all off of your lens using my OCDs I carefully collect it neatly into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor <laughs> so kids I went to college to learn how to grow up and make a mess so kids if you want to grow up and make a mess on your job you gotta stay in school that's me nodding my head in a patronizing way to children so I'm gonna tuck my the lens in so Gary should you ever get new lenses for this frame the pop the other lenses out I have the side I'm working on closest to me I tuck the lens in at the outside corner by the way my my feet are shoulders apart arms bent at a right angle and then stand on one leg hold this out like that no okay no but tuck the left lens in at the outside corner and then using your thumbs you can start at the bottom and then work your way towards the nose and then just press right in I'm going to take this block off pull the sticker away it's no longer needed use my hand approved drying method throw that back in there add to my sticker collection and this is starting to collapse under its own weight so I'm going to see where I can stick this on there to try and keep those on there get get bad sticker okay so we can start go ahead and cutting the left lens we're going to flip that over to L press the sticker on there firmly place the magnet into the Chuck the Charles the Chucky baby today I'm calling it the Gary I am going to be stuck when someone's name is Chuck and I have to call it Chuck. Hit the green start button or Charles. The door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens again is going to be traced by two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the left side of the frame and you can see as it's going around doing that. And of course measuring the thickness to know where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing looking at Gary you got nothing you got no edge thickness there whatsoever so did I lose my black dot I did I'm gonna have to come back down here put a dot over the laser engravings use my layout chart same as on that piece of paper I just always use this one here because we're creatures of habit put the dot back on it now again if you guys missed any of that let me recap oh I love sneaking that joke in <laughs> yes that is a joke you're rolling your eyes at it you're you'll be telling that joke tomorrow I promise so we're gonna turn the axis wheel to 173 put it in over that black dot to read the power and I am getting minus 250 exactly halfway between two and three in the red numbers that's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments from there 0.25 0.50 0.75 one so you're on the tenth rung of a ladder with your glasses off you can read here great in fact with your bifocal strength you can actually take your glasses off to read but that gets old after a while so you leave them on that's why you got the Zeiss progressive lens so you can leave your glasses on to read but you're blessed to be able to read with them off now the further away it gets the blurrier so everything is actually much too large so that's why there's a minus sign your lenses minify the opposite of magnify your lenses will minify why didn't someone tell me I had some ink on my finger watch don't look at that look at this I, are you looking at that dot again are you looking at it are you looking at it <laughs> by the way find a job that you love you'll never have to work another day in your life but once the image is the correct size you have one and a half diopters of astigmatism correction uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F think of it as the fine two knob and we're going to turn that fine two knob to 173 so you have a spherical component of your prescription which is minus 250 90 degrees away you have a steeper curve and it's how we line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp and we're going to line that curve up to the 160 where's my black pen oh there it is so a straight line is 0 to 90 to 180 we're going to turn that fine two knob past the 90 to about 173 almost to the 180 meridian so let's check the second curvature of the lens 
and if all goes well we'll get to four four exactly halfway between three and five how did I get there remember high school math you add two like signs together yeah okay I've forgotten it too let's use today's terms someone borrowed two dollars and fifty cents from you then they borrowed another dollar fifty they would owe you four dollars that's where I have four dollars in the red now your left eye same amount of far-sighted correction but one less step of astigmatism correction and we're going to turn that fine tune knob to five now the reason why this is called the add it means in addition to what's on top so you add these two numbers together you would actually get a minus 50 as reading glasses so you would still have to hold things closer than a bent elbow to see it clearly for now gary eventually you're going to start playing that trombone and having to hold things that it did until you eventually your arms are too long and you're going to have to get progressive lenses which you've got now anyway so and some pretty cool ones too by the way turn green when you go outside I had blue in mine. All right, so once all the optical sawdust is off the lens, again, Gary, if you ever have to install these lenses, have the side you're working on closest to you. Tuck the lenses in at the outside corners, holding it in place with the thumb. And then with the thumb, I tell everyone, thumb your nose is the idea. With your thumb at the nose, press down. How comes that? Oh, I gotta get in shape. So pull the sticker off. Look at that. See, it's peeling away. Let's see if I can stick that back down. Dry that off. Now to take the lenses out with your thumb at the nose. Of course, I have to grab the lens by the other side. I, I kind of torque the frame a little bit using my thumb on top of the other thumb. You can press outward. Out comes your lenses. To put the new lenses in, turn the frame with the temples down. Originally, it was like that. Turn it back right side up, tuck the lens in at the outside corner, push using your thumbs, press down at the nose. Your unbreakable lenses will snap right in. Just make sure your frame is roughly room temperature. If you live in Norway and you leave your glasses in your car overnight in the wintertime, the plastic can become brittle. So, I'm going to spin the fine tune knob to five, which corresponds to the axis of your astigmatism of your left eye. Read the power. I'm getting minus 250, exactly halfway between 2 and 3. Check your astigmatism correction, the second curve. And we're at minus 375, one tick mark away from 4, going away from 3 and towards 4. Because again, you loan someone $2.50, then another dollar and a quarter, you would end up with 375. Actually, go ahead and make, you, make them pay you back 4, just for interest. So, the other thing of the part of the final inspection is to measure your pupillary distance and the optical center height. Your PD of 63. I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb, hold it up to the recommended tweet from Don. Come on, show it to me, show it to me. Donald Trump. Why did he refuse to endorse slow gel until it was all over and even then was very late? Why did he try to not get him to run? Who is he talking about? All right, so we interrupt this broadcast to bring you fr frivolous tweets. So I'm going to measure your PD. When I measure against your right lens, hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 63 millimeters. Now the optical, just like the crosshairs of a scope, I measure vertically and horizontally. I just did the horizontal. Let's do the vertical, which is going to be 24 millimeters, not to the bottom of the lens, but to the middle of the plastic. Because again, your lens goes halfway into the plastic. That's 24. That is 24 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. Now, the last thing I need to do and as part of final inspection is get these in standard alignment. But first, I want to take this time as I clean your lenses to mention that when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I press down. There is no wobble. Now, when I say wobble, when I take mine off, I'm part of that 80%. When I press down on the counter, they wobble, but they sit level on me. 
For those of you keeping score at home, I'm wearing the, I was about to say the Ray-Ban. I'm very close to Christian eyewear. This is model Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Black with silver crosses. You can get also with gold crosses, but I went with silver to match my wisdom highlights that I have coming in. Flip this over, press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple so they overlap perfectly, and they do. Now, I send out a selfie request in every package. Gary, I'd love to have two, one with you indoors with these clear, and then one with you outdoors with these green. I also send out instructions on not only how to care for your frame and lenses, but for the premium microfiber cloth that I'll provide for the Oakley cleaning cloth slash carrying bag, your Zeiss cleaning cloth, and your case with instructions on how to care for those two. Now I should back up, hang on, now it's my wife. Now it's the wife. Steve Bannon arrested today and charged with money laundering and fraud. <laughs> I'm getting all the updates. So this is the Oakley frame I was wearing until I designed Christian eyewear. And I want to start by saying I am a licensed optician. I went to college to learn how to do this. I passed the state board exam with the highest score in the recorded history of my state. Don't worry, I was just as shocked as everyone else when I heard that. The Trust me, I didn't deserve it. I just got lucky. It's a bank of 200 questions. There's eight sections. Of the eight sections, you have to answer 50 questions within an hour. And it's a bank of 200 questions that they randomly select 50. I just got lucky in all eight tests. But I woke up one day and realized I'm just a cover band. I'm putting lenses in other people's songs. And I'll never be a rock star optician until I write my own song. So that's why I designed Christian Eyewear. And I'll have more and more frames coming out. But for now, you can just see them on the website. Again, if, to go and see these Oakleys. And there'll be a link in the description below on where to go. But if you just go to the shop page of ChristianEyewear.com, there'll be a section on the left that says uh, Categories. And you can click on the brand that you want there. And if there's, a, if there's an Oakley frame that you want I don't have listed yet, just go to the Contact Me page of the website. Let me know which model number, size, and color you want, and I'll reply back with price and availability. But I am a licensed optician. I've been doing this for 21 years. I've personally made over tens of thousands of pairs of glasses for people in my community. And now I can do... Let me show you my blue. And now I can make more for people of the Christian community. But you're still going to get all the frames that I've offered for years with the free prescription lenses with the purchase of every frame. And this is what the photo, Zeiss Photo Fusion Blue looks like. Now, as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for photochromic transition lenses to turn dark. A little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now... This is important. Everyone pay attention. Gary, you too. All photochromic lenses will turn dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks are exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day, and that's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, there is the Zeiss Photo Fusion extra gray like the transitions extra active and those will get 30 to 50 percent dark behind a windshield also all photochromic lenses will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above but i remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside we all work much better when it cools off and again having said that the Zeiss Transitions Extra Active will get darker in hotter weather. It's designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside. Now, the four colors you can choose from are gray, brown, green, and blue. And you can see mine's getting lighter a little bit quicker because it, it had a 45-second head start to turn back to clear. But this is the Pioneer Green, which, when it was activated, looked like the Ray-Ban green lenses that Ray-Ban built the Empire on. If you're around water, that's great. Of course, I've wore this for years and years and years. I just love this blue. And again, that's the reason I picked up Zeiss is because they had the blue eight to nine, maybe even 10 months before Essilor did. And then when Essilor finally brought theirs out, it's a really dark gray blue. 
everyone on the internet is saying it looks like the Transition 6 series. The Generation 8 replaced the Signature 7 series. And again, I don't know, I'm biased. There's a video out there if you want to compare the blue from Zeiss and the blue from Essilor. Just do, you know, comparison between Zeiss Photo, Photo Fusion Blue and Essilor Transitions Gen 8 Blue. And you can watch that. But this green is amazing. Like I said, it's a really deep green. Pioneer green, they call it. And that's that. So if you've liked what you've seen, of course, this is where I joke around a lot because I, I like to joke. But the if you Jesus loves you unconditionally, I'm, I'm just trying to get a conditional like. Like this video. Click the thumbs up button. If you want to subscribe, you can click the icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, which is the wooden eye with the gold cross in there. That way you subscribe to my channel. You can click the bell icon so you can get notified every time I come out with a new frame and lens combination for you to see. Again, if you have any questions, you can just go to the contact me page of the website. Or if you like to type, just type in info at christianeyewear.com. You can follow me on Facebook as Christian Space Eyewear. Instagram and Twitter, it's just one word, Christian Eyewear. Of course, you can always leave a question or comment in the comment section below. But Gary in Fullerton, California, thank you so much for the Oakley 8149 Pitchman R Carbon. I like your taste in glasses. I think me and you would be twinsies indoors. Outdoors, I turn blue and then you turn green. But that's the only way strangers will tell us apart. So, but if you're like me, you're six foot tall and named Seymour Better. <laughs> All right, all right, I'll get back to work. But Gary, again, all joking aside, thank you so much for the purchase of the Oakley 8149 Pitchman R Carbon with your Zeiss Light D digital freeform progressive lenses with the Zeiss Photo Fusion Green, Pioneer Green, and DuraVision Chrome Anti Glare. This frame, the Oakley Pitchman R Carbon, model number 8149, comes in one size, which is the 50i size. It comes in three colors. And it sells for $233 with one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses. The Zeiss Invisible Bifocal adds $149. The Photo Fusion Green is $99. Any of the four colors, gray, brown, green, or blue is $99. The DuraVision Chrome Anti-Glare starts at $69. The most expensive Anti-Glare is $99 for a total of $550 complete tax-free. The reason why I point that out now is that a lot of people on the internet are having to charge tax. I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina considers eyeglasses a medical device. So that's why I don't have to charge tax on eyeglasses. But what was I going to say? Oh, I can't think of it. I'm drawing a bunch. I like to have a lot on my mind, but my mind doesn't hold a lot. <laughs> but anyway, all kidding aside, thank you. You, you know for supporting a small independent Christian businessman. You could have purchased these from any large corporate Goliath out there, but you wanted to stay licensed. Again, all lenses are cut in the United States by a licensed optician, and some of them have a sense of humor, but none of them were harmed during the filming of this video. The only people harmed were ones watching this. I had to put up with my bad jokes. Hello, is this on? <laughs> so anyway, Thanks again for your purchase. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share this video and subscribe to my channel. And now hopefully everyone else has gotten a chance to see how I bring God's loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.